regreso aquí en Auto 060 eh, y vamos ahora a pasar a un tema muy importante que es la seguridad en los autos, todo este tipo de información que abunda en el Internet y que a veces puede resultar eh, quizá un poco confusa porque a veces hay como un exceso de información y que no toda la, la gente la puede digerir. So, uh, we're going to switch back to English because we have Diana Duque Miranda, although she speaks Spanish perfectly. Uh, let's do this in English, Diana. How are you, Diana? I'm doing well, Javier. How are you? Excellent. Thank you very much uh, for your time again. And uh, we haven't talked in, in a while. And uh, this really caught my attention yeah. because uh, we uh, we see all these uh, reports and uh, studies and surveys and everything. And uh, apparently some of these, at least some of them, don't, don't, don't mean too much to consumers, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, people worry about government's actions and their impact on consumer behavior. And we recently conducted a survey on the website among our users to understand if they were aware of the National Highway Traffic Association's uh, furlough and the impact that it had basically on them as consumers. And what we found is that many people are just not aware Uh, 82% of them were saying they really had no idea that it had an impact on them. Yeah, and uh, some people don't even know what NHTSA stands for to begin with, I will say. Exactly, right? <laughs> uh, exactly. And we actually, during the survey, you know, explained to them exactly what the agency does, the fact that they uh, process complaints of vehicle defects, they issue safety recalls, and they conduct the crash test and the ratings, and of course, after we told them about it, they report that, yeah, I'd be very concerned about it, but before, you know, we kind of educated them about it, they they weren't aware, and, you know, didn't feel it was much of a concern for them. Yeah, so for people who still don't know what NHTSA is, the National Highway Transport, uh, Transportation and Safety Administration, which is a part of the Depart Department of Transportation here in the U.S., and as Diana was saying, like, they conduct a lot of tests and a lot of, of things, and Actually, some people don't even know that they can call them and they can start an investigation, right? And that's how some recalls uh, become uh, uh, true. Uh, finally, they, they give a report, right? Exactly. I mean, they rely heavily on consumer complaints, and uh, that's how they are made aware of some vehicle defects, and then it is that agency that issues the recalls. Yeah. So um, just to, to make it clear, I mean, these uh, these studies and these crash tests that they do at the NHTSA are, like, really, really important because they may really make a difference when you get into an accident. And so it's not that the information is not important. It's like maybe we are not doing a good job of, about, like, um, making it clear for, for the audience, right, and consumers. I don't know. I mean, what, what's your opinion on this? No, I completely agree. I think that people are, you know, people are aware of safety recalls, and I think maybe people have the misconception that is the actual auto manufacturers that are issuing those, but is this agency that really requires them and forces them to do so. And so the agency conducts a very important job for consumers. And even though we found in our survey that consumers are not aware of it, you know, they do say that after they, they are informed about it, it is going to have an impact, so even, you know, a small impact on their decision of when to buy a car, the fact that, you know, they, these things are not going on right now. We have about 25% of the respondents to the survey saying that it would have some sort of impact on their purchasing um, of a vehicle in the next few months. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing is that uh, we in the media, and uh, I'm, I'm going to take some blame on this too because, I mean, I'm part of the media, we tend to report everything that is bad, and then we don't report as much what everything is good. And th this is the case with the Toyota Sun Acceleration thing, uh, recall, that uh, when it happened, everybody was doing uh, stories about that. And then, like, a few weeks ago, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a final decision on that, and they said Toyota was not at fault at that, right? Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, exactly. I mean, it's the, the negative news that uh, really gets the headlines, right? Um, but I think there are safety recalls, you know, all the time that the agency puts out, and some of them may not impact um, safety very strongly, but they're all very important. So the agency does conduct a very important survey service for consumers. Yeah, and uh, people are, I mean, people should be really aware of these recalls, when, especially when they buy in a used car, I would say, because uh, if the car has been uh, included in a recall and it hasn't been paid attention or, like, it's been fixed, or at, at least 
I've taken a look at it. Uh, it can be a, a really big problem, right? And like actually dilute the value of the car that you're getting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we have another survey that we conduct on an ongoing basis on the site where we ask about what are the most important things to you when you're shopping for a vehicle. And safety over the past three months has been second only to durability and reliability. So safety is a very important issue, obviously, for consumers, even if it's not, you know, top of mind immediately when they're shopping. So it is very important to um, to stay in touch with these recalls and for the media to make an effort to make sure people are aware. Yeah. Uh, so, Diana, um, Diana Duque Miranda from Kelly Blue Book, um, you also conducted in this survey some other aspects that uh, um, uh, that are important in people's minds to make the decision. So what are the positive things? I mean, I, I see people are getting a little bit uh, more optimistic about the the economic situation here in the, in the United States. Yeah, that was quite interesting. We find that um, about a quarter of the people responding to the survey are feeling like the economy will either – remain the same, and then about 36%, 36% sorry, um, but it's going to become much or slightly better. So about 40% of the people are, are have an optimistic view of the economy in the coming months. So that's really great news. And um, among those people who say that the furlough, the NISA furlough, is going to have an impact on their decision, some of them are actually saying, um, close to 10% of them, that they're going to go out and buy a car in a hurry because they are not quite sure how, what kind of impact this is going to have on interest rates and loans, and so they're actually going to go hurry up and get a car before things change. Yeah, and uh, I guess it's a, a good sign for, for the industry because, uh, I mean, like we're seeing like record sales every month from almost everybody, uh, every manufacturer, yeah. so I think it, that, 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 that optimis, optimism by the consumers is going to help with that too. And uh, in going into that, Diana, uh, Kelly Blue Book also launched uh, recently another service to make the shopping experience much uh, easier and like uh, more informative for consumers. Can you talk about that, please? Yeah, absolutely. This is a new um, feature on Kelly Blue Book that just recently, um, just this week, launched nationally. We've been testing it in a couple of markets, um, and it's now on national. So if you visit kbd.com, you will see the new car transparency feature, and it really shows, um, you know, what it, it gives you guidance on what you should expect to pay for a vehicle, what the fair market value should be. Um, it's it's kind of like a traditional gauge that you would see on the dashboard of a vehicle, like a gas gauge, and it sort of goes from the left to the right. Getting all the way to the right would be um, kind of like a red bar that would indicate maybe that pricing is way too high, and somewhere in the middle would be the green bar that indicates that is a fair, uh, what you should expect to pay for a vehicle and the fair market value in your area. So it's a very visual, easy way to see the information and, and get exactly a good understanding of the price that you should be paying for that vehicle. Yeah, and uh, Diana, then in the next segment, we're going to have a, a colleague talking about the question of should I buy, should I lease, and there's tools also here in that aspect uh, of, of, of the purchase decision, like uh, making making it easier for people to decide on that, like leasing against uh, purchasing a car? Yeah, there are other features um, at kbd.com that sort of show you what you, you should expect to pay uh, on a monthly basis for a vehicle and may show you the differences between a new vehicle versus a leased vehicle versus a used vehicle. Um, so that would make it, you know, a little bit easier and provide you some more information towards making that decision. Yeah. And uh, so, um, in, in general, that's, uh, I mean, Kelly Blue Book obviously is a, a great destination for people to, as, as people say, do the homework before going to a dealership, right? So how long, uh, yeah. do, you, how long do you think, is, in, in average, will take somebody to go and do the research? Well, you know, it can be very quick, or if you know specifically maybe what brand, what model you're looking for, or you could really go in there and spend a lot of time looking at a variety of models and brands and really understanding uh, what consumer reviews are, what our experts at Kelly Blue Book have to say about specific vehicles. So there's tons of content and tons of data if time is what you have and want to spend on researching it, but you can also do it very quickly if maybe you've already narrowed down your choices and your options and know exactly what you want to get. 
Yeah, and more importantly, your budget, right? <laughs> Because you don't want to. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go there. Very true. People have some expectations sometimes, and they want to go and like buy the finest car. So Diana Duque Miranda from Kelly Blue Book, thank you very much as always for the great information. So and uh, Kelly Blue, KBB dot com, right? To to find out about all this great information. Yeah, exactly. Whatever you need to know about a, a new vehicle, even a used vehicle, visit KBB dot com, and you're sure to find the information. Thank you very much, Diana, and uh, see you soon, uh, maybe at the LA Auto Show. Awesome. I will see you there. Thanks, Javier. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Ahí tenían a Diana Duque Miranda de Kelly Blue Book hablando sobre los dos temas eh, importantes de esta semana, que fue cuán importantes son los resultados de las pruebas de seguridad que hace el gobierno y esta nueva herramienta para hacer más fácil la tarea a la hora de comprar un auto. Y hablando de esto, en el siguiente segmento vamos a hablar con una colega que nos va a explicar las ventajas y desventajas, o los mitos, mejor dicho, a la hora de hacer un lease para un auto nuevo. Así que no se vayan, esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota, y eh, como siempre, gracias a DJ Cafa ahí en los controles, y eh, recuerden visitar nuestra página de facebook.com slash auto 060, y también para el resto de la programación de Cristina Radio Network, facebook.com slash Cristina Radio. Yo soy Javier Mota, esto es Auto 060.